Hey folks, Rick here. I got one more video for 2023 I wanted to share with you. I promised you I would share this, this quick demo on the benefits of moving your transducer away from your target fish uh, when you're fishing relatively shallow water. Now, when I say relatively shallow water, I'm talking 18, 20, 22, 23 feet of water. Now, some of you don't consider that shallow. You know, I'm not talking seven, eight, 10 feet of water. I'm talking, you know, 20 feet of water in this part of the country up in northern Wisconsin, uh, Sturgeon Bay, Green Bay, Lake Michigan, um, where you can actually catch fish in, you know, 40, 50 feet of water and, and even deeper. So what happens is in the fall when the water, when the lake turns, Okay, the, the, the water clarity goes from five, seven, eight feet at the most of clarity to 20, 25 feet in a relatively short time frame, like within a couple of days. And from what I understand, I haven't experienced this yet, but it'll go to super uber gin clear within a, in, within a day. Uh, one day you'll be out there and then you'll be able to see 30 feet down and it'll happen within a day. And that is um, a special time to go out there and start fishing. Now, when this lake or lakes like this, Sturgeon Bay, Green Bay area, when it turns like that, those smallies get very, very sensitive and very spooky. Um, they get spooky to boat, to your aware, you're very aware of where you're at. And if you're pinging them on a, with your sonar and you're noticing those fish are just not hitting, try moving your transducer away, whether you have, you know, Lawrence, Garmin, Humminbird, uh, if you have forward-facing sonar and you're casting to your fish, and it's not just up here, down south as well. You know, some, some of those reservoirs down south, same thing. Move that transducer away. All right, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you get something out of it. And uh, please, if you do, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I don't have much of a YouTube channel presence, but I'm gaining a little bit of traction, and I could usually... I could use the help. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you on the water. All right, guys, let me show you what I got here. Uh, I am sitting at uh, 24 feet of water. Let me show you some quick basic settings that I have. I have my gain at 77%. Depth range is at 30 feet, and my forward range is at 100 feet. Now, I don't, I don't show you the sonar settings, uh, but those are just the basic settings. All right, so what you're going to see here is I'm targeting some fish that are between 22 and 40 feet away uh, from the boat, okay? And I'll show you them here. They're kind of hard to pick up, but they're on the bottom. Uh, after, after you get some um, experience looking at the bottom, you can, you can definitely see how these bass relate to the bottom on your, on your Garmin LVS-34. Okay, so coming up here, you're gonna see some fish here. I'm gonna point them out here. You can see them down on the bottom. Oh, you can see their fins come up and them turning around. But right there, at about 42 feet, there's a bass right there. You can see one or two of them right there at the bottom there. Okay, and then there's another one or two right at about between 22 and 30 feet out from the boat. Right there. You can see them right there. Okay, now there you see my bait going into about 40 feet out, um, going down. It's a tube, and you see it going down. Uh, in the water column slowly and there's a bass reacting to it right there that's that big bass that you'll see me catch here in a minute now I have my sonar see how he just turned away from it and I tried twitching it and nothing and, and this is an example of some shallow water relatively shallow water where you have your sonar pinging and pointing right at that fish and they're not interested all right, so in the next part here, I'm going to show you what I do when I turn my sonar away from the fish after I've seen my bait targeting uh, the area. Okay, guys, right here, what I'm doing, I'm looking at my, my 8612 graph, and I'm targeting those fish at about 30, 40 feet out. I'm looking at the graph to find out exactly where they're at. And right here, I do my cast. And I cast about 50 feet out. <clears throat> past the target and you can see the uh, the bait in the water column there uh, slink, sinking down uh, to the bottom. Now once it gets to the bottom you're going to see me move that transducer away from those fish. Now my target area is 30 or 40 feet out. You see that bait hit the bottom right about now there. 
Okay, now I move the transducer away once the bait is on the bottom. You can actually see on the graph on the upper left how the, uh, how the image has changed there. So now, um, now there you'll see me a couple misses there. Not sure if I had some strikes or what, but um, now that the transducer is away, now you're just fishing like you usually do, just, you know, slow. And I, I think it's particularly important to fish really slow um, at this point. Um, because the, the fish are in relatively shallow water and they've, you know, this is, uh, this is what, I get this information from my friend Jacob, Jacob Bigelow. You know, once the water starts clearing up here in the fall, um, these fish get very wary. And here comes the hook set right there. So these fish are, are, are very wary um, of baits um, and sonar when the water clears up in the fall. And uh, this has just been a fantastic tip. Uh, that I learned from a few guys. Uh, one guy when I was fishing down in Gunnersville at the Toyota Series uh, Championship, uh, the pro was uh, doing the same thing. He was targeting ledges and, and brush piles and he would move his transducer once his bait hit the water. This is actually a nice fish. It's uh, 4.7 pounds. So there you go, guys. That's a big one. Four six nine. Four point seven pounds. That's a nice smallie. Not five, not six, not seven. Still, it's a nice fish. Pretty. Look at the slab on that guy. Beautiful fish.